Hello and welcome to Global Eye. I'm Parikshit Dutra. India's maiden indigenous aircraft carrier INS Vikrant was formally commissioned today after completing almost a year of trials at sea. Prime Minister Modi inaugurated the 45,000 ton carrier at the Kochi shipyard. At 262 meters long and 62 meters wide, the 20,000 crore rupee warship is India's largest aircraft carrier to be built domestically. This takes India on par with United States, UK, China, France and Russia, the elite group of nations to build an aircraft carrier in-house. The carrier can accommodate more than 1,500 crew members and nearly 30 aircraft, including MiG fighter jets and helicopters. The first aircraft carrier to be operated by the Indian Navy was also called the Vikrant. It was officially commissioned in 1961 and played a significant role during the 1971 India-Pakistan War. This is when the carrier led the naval blockade in then East Pakistan, now Bangladesh. After 36 years of service, the ship was decommissioned in 1997 before being dismantled and sold. Definitely today, with the commissioning of uh, INS Vikrant, this is a big moment for the Indian Navy. <laughs> विक्रांत पर हो रहा ये आयोजन विश्व क्षितिज पर भारत के बुलंद होते हौसलों की हुंकार है लेट मी गो अक्रॉस टू एडमिरल सुनील लांबा द फॉर्मर चीफ ऑफ नेवल स्टाफ हुज ज्वाइनिंग अस राइट नाउ एडमिरल लांबा थैंक यू वेरी मच for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Let me begin by asking you, how is this new naval carrier, the indigenous aircraft carrier, going to add to the capability of the Indian Navy? Thank you for inviting me onto your channel. Uh, it's going to make a significant impact on the strategic capability of not only the Indian Navy, but also of our nation, India. September is an important month. In September 1960, we commissioned the first indigenous ship, that is a seaward defense boat of about 100 tons. Today, in September 22, we have built the largest indigenous warship, the aircraft carrier, INS Vikrant. Uh, INS Vikrant, when she is fully operational, along with her the Scots, the carrier task force or the carrier battle group, will have significant capabilities in the larger reaches of the Indo-Pacific. It can project power, deterrence, diplomacy, both flag showing and coercive, provide HADR assistance where required, monitor the sea lines of communications in the Indo-Pacific. So it's not only going to add a capability to the Indian Navy, but also to our nation. Right. Uh, Admiral Lamba, in terms of warfare capabilities, how, how is the INS Vikrant uh, equipped and how does it compare to the INS Vikramaditya? Uh, in comparison, they're more or less the same. They're more or less the same size. Uh, they will carry more or less the same air wing. At the moment, they'll have the air wing of MiG-29K fighter aircraft, along with the Kamov-31 early warning helicopter. And uh, in the year to come, uh, the MH-60R, the anti-submarine patrol, the multi-role helicopter. So capability-wise, the air wing of both Vikramaditya and Vikrant will be the same. With the potential to carry 30 plus aircraft, both the aircraft carriers have huge capabilities as, as part of the carrier task force. Right. Uh, Admiral Lamba, do you also feel that, of course, uh, within the Navy, there is a demand for a third aircraft carrier? And it is believed that there must always be two 
in service in case one has gone for refitting or any kind of repairs for that matter. Uh, how soon do you think should the Indian government take a decision on this? The uh, second indigenous aircraft carrier will be called the INS Vishal. By when do you think this could be sanctioned? The decision should have been taken as of yesterday. As India's stature grows, and uh, not only in the Indian Ocean, the larger Indo-Pacific, we'll have to bear greater responsibilities. And if you want to be a regional power, it has, can only be on the back of maritime power. So that is why the Indian Navy has always made a case for three aircraft carriers. When you have a, a class of ship, say like if you have three of a class of ship, you'll always find the serviceability of any platform is about 66, 65%. Always one ship will be under a maintenance period or as we in the Navy call the refit. So you need three to have two operational aircraft carriers which are available to you to deploy where the national interest when the need lies. And I think this decision should be taken sooner than later. Right. Uh, when was the idea for INS Vishal, the third indigenous aircraft carrier, first floated uh, Admiral Lamba? This, and the why has there been a delay? carrier doesn't carry the name of INS Vishal. I think this is a name which has been given by the media. We've been talking of IAC-2, that indigenous aircraft carrier 2. Uh, this idea of the IAC-2 was floated, in my, if my memory is correct, more than a decade back. Uh, it has taken different forms and fit. Ultimately, the Navy took a decision in 2016-17 that it would be conventionally powered and not nuclear powered to a size of about 65,000 ton. That is the largest ship which can be built in a building dock in India with the cattle bar configuration, that is catapult launch and arrestor gear, but that gives huge capabilities of operating all kinds of aviation assets, early air running, fixed wing aircraft, unmanned platforms, fighters, with the ability to launch with full payload and with full fuel. So that is a proposal which the Indian Navy had put forward. And I think the government should take a decision, like I said earlier, quickly, because it will take a little bit of time to design it and thereafter build it. Mm -hmm. so in, in, if you take a decision now, right. in my opinion, uh, the earliest you can get the IAC-2 would be in about 10 years' time. Right. Uh, Admiral Lamba, thank you very much for summing up uh, the immediate needs of the Indian Navy and the importance of this moment the commissioning of INS Vikrant and what it means for India's security needs. Thanks once again for being with us here on Global Eye. My pleasure.